In this module, we will discuss the third uh, type of adjusting entry that must be prepared at the end of the reporting period. And this is the adjusting entry to accrued unpaid expenses. If you recall from module one that the third adjusting entry involves a debit to an expense account and it credits either a liability or equity account. Three common examples of accounts that would require this type of adjusting entry include interest owed on a debt instrument, salaries owed to employees for services rendered, and restricted stock that is owed to employees. We will see that the adjusting entry required for the first two examples involves a credit to a liability account, while the credit in the third example involves an equity account. Interest payable. When companies borrow money and both principal and interest are due at maturity, interest payable accounts must be created at the end of a reporting period to reflect that a liability has been incurred so that the balance sheet is not misstated. For example, if ABC Inc. borrows $100,000 from a bank on November 1st, 2008, and the loan is a two-year loan with an interest rate of 6% with principal and interest due at maturity, and they prepare annual financial statements on December 31st each year, then economically, ABC has borrowed $100,000 on November 1st, 2008. They won't have to pay back any money until November 1st, 2010, and at that point in time, they'll owe the $100,000 plus the interest that they accrue at a 6% interest rate, which would be $6,000 for, for one year, and since it's a two-year loan, $12,000. So what they're going to need to pay back on November 1st of 2010 is $112,000. And the question is, on December 31st of 2008, do they need to accrue the interest uh, and record the interest that has accrued up until that date? And the answer is yes, so that they do not understate their liabilities and overstate income. So what we need to determine is what is uh, the interest that has accrued as of December 31st of 2008. Well, to determine this, we'll take the $100,000, the principal, we'll multiply it by 6%, which is the rate, and we'll multiply it by time, which in this case, the rate is based on 12 months, but we've only, we only need to accrue two of those 12 months since the interest would only accrue for November and December in the year 2008, which gives us a $1,000 interest. Therefore, our adjusting entry that would be needed on December 31st of 2008 is a debit to interest expense and a credit to interest payable. Interest payable represents a liability, and interest expense reduces our income. If you did not make this adjusting entry, interest expense would be understated, which would overstate net income, and you'd be not re you would not be recording a liability, which would mean that your liabilities would be understated. If we move forward a year, instead of accruing two months' worth of interest, if we get to December 31st of 2009, then the adjusting entry that we would need to make would be for 12 months. So once again, we would take the principal of $100,000, we'd multiply it by the rate of 6%, but now instead of multiplying it by 2 over 12, we're going to multiply it by 12 over 12 because it's a full year's worth of interest that's accruing in the year 2009, which gives us $6,000, which makes sense because $100,000 times 6% is $6,000. That is the annual amount that you would be owing on it in terms of interest. So when we get to the end of 2009, if we do not make this $6,000 adjusting entry, our interest payable would reflect just a $1,000 that we owe, when in fact we owe $7,000, the $1,000 from 2008 plus the $6,000 that we just accrued in 2009. So therefore, the adjusting entry updates the interest payable, the liability account, and increases it to the correct $7,000. And the $6,000 interest expense reduces our income so that we don't overstate net income. The second type of, uh, of adjusting entry 
that accrues an unpaid expense, is salaries payable? In this example, ABC Inc. has five employees. Each employee makes $5,000 per week for services rendered Monday through Friday. So you can assume they make $1,000 for Monday, $1,000 Tuesday, $1,000 Wednesday, $1,000 Thursday, and $1,000 Friday for five employees. So a total of $25,000 is earned each week by these employees. Employees are paid every Friday, so the company's payroll is $25,000 that's paid on uh, checks that are cut every Friday. And they prepare annual financial statements on December 31st each year. So as long as December 31st falls on a Friday, there wouldn't need to be an adjusting entry because you would be paying out this $25,000 uh, at the end of the year on the, the year-end date. But for years where December 31st falls on a day other than Friday, if we assume that December 31st, 2008 falls on a Wednesday, then we may have a problem because there's going to be three days that our employees have worked for us, January, Feb, uh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but it will not be included. Uh, we wouldn't have actually paid them yet. We won't pay them until Friday. So those three days worth of expenses need to be accrued, and we need to set up a liability to show that we do owe employees for three days worth of work that hasn't been paid. Otherwise, we'd be understating our liabilities. So the question is, how do we calculate this adjusting entry? This adjusting entry is calculated by taking the $5,000 for each employee times five, which gives them the weekly pay. So the total of $25,000 would be owed if they worked the entire week. But since only three out of the five workday weeks have been worked, they've only earned 15000 of the $25,000. So therefore, the adjusting entry that we would make to record this is a salary expense of 15000 to show that there was this expense that helped generate revenue for the first three days that equaled $15,000. And there was a payable of 15000 a salary payable of 15000 to reflect that we have a liability. We owe somebody $15,000. We owe five people a total of $15,000. So the salary payable is our permanent balance sheet account. Um, and the salary expense is our temporary income statement account. And finally, the last example of this type of adjusting entry, which accrues an unpaid expense, is restricted stock. The reason why we chose restricted to discuss restricted stock with you uh, is, even though it's more of an advanced topic of accounting, is because it's an example where instead of creating a liability, uh, we instead uh, create an equity account because it is possible to accrue an unpaid expense through a, a, an account that's not a liability. And, and restricted stock is one of those examples. So on January 1st, 2008, ABC Inc. offers their CEO 100,000 shares of restricted stock, currently worth $5 per share, as an extra incentive. So they're providing their CEO with essentially a $500,000 bonus, but the catch is that the restricted stock is not going to be delivered to the CEO until January 1st of 2010, provided he's still employed by ABC. So restricted stock is granted to employees to try to incentivize them uh, to be more long-term thinking uh, rather than just what's, you know, we try to beat the earnings next quarter or next year. This is at least forcing the 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 CEO to think two years out because he's not going to receive these shares for another two years. So the way restricted stock works is you take the value of the the grant, the value of the shares that are granted on the date the restricted stock is granted, which in this case would be $500,000, and you spread it evenly over the restriction window. So when they get to the end of 2009, the restriction window in this case is two years, and when they get to the end of 2008, I should say, um, they're going to have to accrue one half of the $500,000. So they're going to have to accrue $250,000 of compensation expense. And they do that through the following journal entry. They debit compensation expense $250,000, and they credit paid in capital restricted stock $250,000. Now, this credit is not to a liability account. This credit is to an equity account. So within owner's equity, there's contributed capital and retained earnings. 
and one of the things that goes into contributed capital is paid in capital restricted stock. So the journal entry is similar to what we saw with salaries and interest, but instead of crediting a liability account, we're crediting an equity account. This is an example of an accrued expense that affects an equity account instead of a liability account. Uh, the debit still goes to an expense, so that's similar. We call it compensation expense. But now the credit is going to an equity account paid in capital restricted stock. So that's an example, and those other two are examples of an expense that you haven't paid out yet, but you are accruing.